Joining me now is Mark Morial, the president and CEO of the National Urban League. Mark, it's very good to see hey, you. Hey, good afternoon. Good to be with you. Happy day. day. A day of service, mm -hmm. as it has been, you know, interpreted throughout the United States and, and really globally. A lot of community projects taking place, but uh, an important day for the nation to reaffirm uh, its commitment to Dr. King's vision and his principles, Andrea, which I believe are as relevant today as ever before, given the times in which we live, the circumstances we face, uh, the attacks on democracy, the rise in hate crimes, the legitimization of extremism. Uh, Dr. King's message is so important. I'm encouraging all the young people uh, in my family to go to YouTube and listen to Dr. King's mountaintop speech. Uh, listen to his words uh, on a day like today. I mean, we've got to celebrate this day, yes, with service, but with a reaffirmation and an understanding as to what he stood for. Now, I know we talked, you have a son in college. How many children do you have? Three children, a grown daughter who's married with a first granddaughter. Congratulations. A 20-year-old son who's at UPenn and a 17-year-old daughter who's a junior in high school. And, uh, you know, we try, I look at them and, and we all try to instill in our young people some sense of uh, values around justice, but also the responsibility they have to work, to serve, uh, and to push, uh, if you will, the fight for American justice and democracy forward. Now, how frustrating is it to you, as a father and grandfather now, uh, Andrea Waters King, whose birthday it is today, we heard that a little bit, you know, off tone, at least yeah. off tune, <laughs> um, rendition of happy birthday from, led by the president, but Martin Luther King III's wife, who is in herself, in her own right, a leader of the yes. movement. She on Morning Joe today was talking about the frustration that she and other parents feel, uh, people of color and, and white and black people, that we are moving backwards in many ways, that not only is Dr. King's dream not being realized, but we are losing the rights for women. We are losing to the, the inter, you know, to the people pushing hate, anti-Semitism, anti-Asian rhetoric, um, it's, the rise uh, in violence in this country. It's frustrated because I'm, I'm from a generation of, uh, my parents were both civil rights warriors, fighters, and activists. Uh, and much of our generation was built on the promise that the vision of a more just and integrated America would define our lives. So it is un disconcerting, uh, 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 sometimes angering, many times angering, to see the assault that's taking place on voting, on democracy, on women, and to see that notwithstanding the great prosperity of this nation, too many Americans are struggling uh, yes, we have those in poverty and the poor, uh, but people who work every day, uh, many times uh, women who lead families struggling just to make ends meet, to pay rent, to pay a mortgage, uh, to be able to take care of their basic responsibilities. That is frustrating, but that is why Dr. King's birthday is a continuation of a call to action, that we have to work for these uh, uh, work on these issues, and we have to build bridges around these issues. But there's a undercurrent in this country, and I think the Trump years unleashed it uh, to nor the normalization of hate, distrust, extremism, racism, anti-Semitism, and we cannot be silent. To be silent, to be uh, accepting of it, is absolutely the way to water it. We've got to fight back. And how, how difficult is it with young people to persuade them to keep hope alive, as Jesse would say? I think so. What we saw in 2020 is we saw young people take to the streets. Uh, we saw young people uh, become activists. I think that spirit has to continue. And there's got to be an understanding, and, and this is how we educate young people, that activism uh, for uh, six months, eight months, or a year is not enough. That there's got to be a continuation. That activism has to not only continue, but it's got to lead its way into uh, the political system. It's got to lead its way into the classrooms of America 
to the college campuses of America, to the boardrooms of America, uh, to the houses of faith in America, that sense that we're at an inflection point, that sense that we're in a fight, that sense that we've got to work uh, for a 21st century America that we can be proud of. Uh, these are tough and demanding times, but, but I do believe that there is this powerful coalition of people out here, this powerful cross-section of people who do, do embrace what Dr. King stood for and are committed to working for it every day. Now, it all brings back the way those of us who were adults at the time remember April 3rd and the, the great speech that he was giving, which sounded in some ways uh, eerily prescient. Let's play a little of it. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. Your, pres your parents were in the movement. Tell me what it was like as a young person to... I was 10. Yeah. Uh, my mom was a classmate of Dr. King's at BU in the 50s. I remember when the news came on television, I remember her shrieking and hurrying to the telephone. I guess to call my father, to call her friends, I remember the sense of tension and that this was this moment. And of course, this is five years after the death of John F. Kennedy. This is three years after the assassination of Malcolm X. This is five years after the assassination of Medgar Evers. So there was this sense that all of this, all of those prominent civil rights leaders, their lives were being threatened and under attack and they were being shot and killed. I remember that moment and I remember uh, the sense of uh, despair in the country, the sense of despair in my, my family over this tremendous loss of this great man. And the impact we can look back now, it, it, it did not kill his movement. It dampened the fire of that movement. And it's been up to so many since then to try to carry it on, to try to build it, to try to encourage others. And that's, you know, Andrea, the fight today, I want to just encourage people who are listening to remember Dr. King was not an idle dreamer. He was a man of action. And we need to be people of action. Well, I can't think of a better, better message. Thank you so much. Thank you.